What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be doing a review of the Armor All Extreme Shield Ceramic Car Wash Soap. Um, I did, I don't know if you remember watching it or not, but I did a short video on this product a little while ago. And in that video, all I did was I sprayed on this product from my foam cannon onto a junk car, simply rinsed it off. And uh, the hydrophobic behavior caught me by surprise on that car. I'll be quite honest with you guys. This is probably the first Armor All product I've purchased in 10 years since uh, not having any luck with their products prior to so that. So I was a little, I was a little wary about buying this product, but uh, it just it caught my attention for some reason at uh, Canadian Tire. So I figured, you know what? Let's pick it up. Let's try it, and let's see how it uh, compares to some other hydrophobic uh, SiO2 based car wash soaps and wash and waxes and stuff that I have. So if we look at this here, you can pause the video at any point to kind of read this over. But it says directions for use: use on a cool car, preferably shade. So that's pretty common. Rinse car, remove loose dirt, pour two ounces of wash concentrate into a bucket and mix with water. So it doesn't really tell you how much water to mix it in. I'm assuming that means into one gallon. So I have sitting down there, I'm going to have about three and a half gallons in there. So I'll put six ounces of soap. And then it just says to the rest of it's pretty standard here. Thoroughly rinse each section. Oh, it says work in a four foot squared area here. So. Um, we'll do that and then rinse thoroughly. So the reason they say to do that is they, they don't want you to let this dry on the surface and I can attest to that because if you let this product or m most SiO2 based car wash soaps that I've tried dry on the surface, the results are going to be a streaky mess that is super but difficult anyways, to remove. So they say do not let this dry on the surface and they say that for good reason. I'll show you guys at the end of this video what happens when you let this dry on the surface. The, uh, the streaks it creates were a pain to remove. There, that you can remove them, but they're just, ugh, you don't want to do that. So they even highlight, or not highlight, they put in bold, do not allow formula to dry on vehicle surface. And then you can use this in a foam cannon as well as a bucket. And I'll show you guys both today. So I got my, uh, got my chemical guys bucket there. Like I said, it's probably got about three gallons of water in there right now. I'm gonna add the six ounces of soap and then we'll activate the suds and we'll kind of take a look together to see what that looks like. Some of the soap squeezed out of the side of the bottle, so this is super slick right now. I really hope I don't spill any. So that's four. So that's about six ounces of soap and once I get the suds activated in here there's gonna be about three three to three and a half gallons of water give or take So as you guys can see there, there's plenty of suds and that's one of my fears when it comes to an SiO2 or a wash and wax in general is that sometimes the suds, they're not the greatest and they dissipate pretty quick, but that's pretty good. It feels pretty slick. I know I'm wearing gloves right now, but it feels decently slick. So, but the real test will be to see how it feels under the wash mitt. So now let's get to showing you guys what the water behavior looks like. All right, so now I'll show you guys what the hydrophobics look like on this hood before starting. And this is just a, another beater junk car, but it gets driven every day. And uh, I'm not even sure what the last thing was that we put on here, I can't quite remember. But uh, either way, I'll show you guys what the water behavior looks like before, and then we'll see if this car wash soap's able to make a difference. I 
I mean, that's obviously flat. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing this whole part, uh, this whole part of the video in one take, just so you guys can see that there's nothing added in between clips or anything added to the hood. Not that anybody would do that or anybody would even have a reason to do that. Um, it's like, I'm not trying to sell you guys this product. I'm just trying to show you guys what this product is capable of. So like I said, this is all going to be one take. You can see there that there's no hydrophobic, um, what do you want to call it properties right now so we'll see how it looks in a second here so i'm just going to do a whole hood in one shot here even though it's bigger than a four foot area That's really good um, sudsing action there. I gotta say, I gotta admit, for a product like Armor All, I was quite surprised when I did the original quick test using the foam cannon, and now again, I'm quite surprised at how slick this feels. Like it feels pretty, feels almost as slick as just any other soap that I've used. And you can see there, the suds are really uh, impressive. So, right now I'm doing exactly what you shouldn't do when using this product, and that is using it in direct sunlight. But what choice do I have here? So I'm gonna get this rinse right away. Okay, look at that. <laughs> That is not bad at all. Wow. Okay, so whether you use it with a foam cannon or you do a contact wash, this soap is actually excellent. I'm gonna go over it one more time just to see if that increases the uh, water behavior or the water beating you're sheeting at all, but we'll see. Look at those slugs though. Let's get it rinsed with a uh, regular hose this time. Not that it makes any difference.
So I'm impressed with that. I'm not gonna lie. I can't uh, can't deny that that's better water beating than most other washes and waxes that I've tried. Certainly better than um, turtle wax hybrid ceramic wash and wax or whatever that was. That was actually pretty disappointing to me. I'm not gonna lie. But you can see here, this is all one take. And if that doesn't show you how good this soap actually is, I don't know what will. Even down the fender here where I kind of rinsed it down, it seems to have done a decent job beating the water there as well. The rest of the whole, the whole rest of the car, the water behavior wise is exactly the same as the hood was, just so you guys are aware. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish washing the rest of the car here quickly. So it's been about, uh, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes since uh, since I last activated the suds here. They've gone deep, you know, pretty flat, but not a big deal. You can just put your pressure washer back in there or your hose. Quickly reactivate it like that. So you guys got a chance to see what the water behavior looks like on a somewhat flat panel. Sorry. So yeah, so the hood, somewhat flat, you guys saw what the water behavior looked like. Now I'll show you on the right quarter panel. I'm gonna attempt to flub this just to show you guys uh, kind of what the sheeting looks like. Hopefully that's uh, coming across on camera. Look at that, it's dry. This portion here, completely dry. And I know I didn't show you guys the whole car before, but the rest of the car was just like the hood, trust me guys. And the other thing is that this right here, to me, looks glossier than it did before. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna show you guys what happens if you accidentally let this dry on the surface. So in this part of the hood, just right about here, you can, you can see it. I let this dry and you can see all the streaks and all the residue that's left over. But let's just try wiping it off. There's still a little bit of water there. That is taking a lot of effort to wipe. So this might not be the right angle for you guys to be able to see this, but there's still, <clears throat> let me show you from a different angle, but there's still um, watermarks or residue or whatever you want to call it all over the hood. Let me see if I can see it from this side. Oh, you can see it much better from this side. So from this angle here, set this down. So right, see that? It's all over the place, but you can see it more right here. So let's see if we can get rid of that. You can get rid of it. it, just takes a lot of effort to do so. So I'm gonna reactivate this and see if that'll do the trick. As I'm drying that off, I can see that that didn't do anything at all. So the watermarks or soap marks, stains, whatever you wanna call them, they're still very much there. So now what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to rewash the area with the same soap rinse it off and see if that makes a difference. So I don't even need to finish drying that. I can already see that those soap marks, I'll take it off the tripod, are still absolutely very much there. You see that? All over the place. So that's like I can't reactivate it and you can see me wiping here it's still there what I have to do is I have to wipe pretty vigorously with my microfiber in order to get rid of those I haven't tested every other product I have to see what is going to be the best at taking these spots off I'm sure a quick light polish is going to make quick work of that but the point is simply accidentally simply allowing this to dry on the surface can easily create an extra hour worth of work for you or more so imagine if you let it dry on the whole car thinking that this is going to be like an Adam's shampoo 
where you can let that completely dry on the vehicle and it'll easily react. For the next part of the video here, I'm just going to show you guys how this works from a foam cannon. And if, uh, if we look at the back here, it says six to eight ounces, um, which is quite a bit in a foam cannon that has 946 milliliters, I think it says. So 32 ounces, yeah, 32 ounces. This is a thousand milliliters. I'm just going to go the rest of the way. I got the water line up to here. It's warm water, about 820, give or take, if I did my math correctly. And then six ounces, we're going to put it in. We'll mix it up. We'll see what this looks like. By the way, if that that looks new, it is since the last time you guys saw this uh, back portion here. I'm doing a little bit of planting today. So try to carefully pour this in without a funnel. You can see the steam coming out there, so I'm using pretty hot water. Okay, so two quick points. One, I love how thin this soap is. Thin viscosity soaps are the best in my opinion because they mix right away. I'll have to give this a quick shake after and it'll be perfectly good to go. I don't have to worry about it clumping up in there. And also, one downside about these cheap Amazon foam cannons is the size of the uh, fill hole. You have to be super careful to use a funnel. So that was four ounces, we'll put another two. Uh, it's a little over two, but whatever. This is gonna take this all the way to the top. I'll leave that much because I, I did overfill it. So that's six ounces. I can't quite pinpoint the smell of this stuff. I mean, it just kind of smells like a detergent with a little bit of something in there. Nice light green color. That's all it takes to mix it all together, right? So it doesn't right, take so much. I got the foam cannon hooked up, and I'm only going to do the hood here because uh, I'm going to use the rest of this to do a maintenance wash on my Jeep after this. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so you guys see it there. It's not the thickest foam in the world, but definitely thick enough to get the job done. And it's just dripping down over there. But uh, nice, decently thick foam. So not bad. I mean, I'm, I'm not using the best pressure washer here. It's a 1900 PSI 1.3 GPM with a cheap Amazon foam cannon. 1.1 millimeter orifice for anybody wondering. But uh, there you go. That's what the foam looks like. So let's get this rinse off real quick before we have this, a mess of water spots. All right, everybody. So I'm gonna give you my quick final thoughts on this product here. It's running out of, I'm running out of daylight here. It's late in the day. So I'm gonna make this quick. So the long and the short of it is that this product is a good product and I would use it on my own vehicle. Simple as that. And I just did a maintenance clean on the Grand Cherokee here. So let's see if I can get this to focus. So as you see, I just use this on my own vehicle. And when there's a product that I will tell you that I'll use on my own vehicle, that means in my books, that's a good product. And this is a good product. You guys saw the water behavior before. You guys saw the water behavior after. And I think it kind of speaks for itself on how this product performed. It's a nice pH neutral soap. Um, pretty simple so it's not going to hurt your coatings pre-existing coatings it's not meant to be a standalone product obviously but it's meant to support and supplement your pre-existing coating that you have on there but as you guys just saw it leaves a lot of its own uh, stuff behind and it creates a hydrophobic surface for pretty much everything that this product touches so that's what I really like about this product um, what I don't di like about it is that it dries relatively quickly and when it does dry you're gonna have a bad day, trust me. So with that being said, I would not be using this on a hot day. I would not be using this in direct sunlight. 
and I just foamed down my Jeep with this today. I'll tell you right now that I don't like to foam down a whole vehicle with this product. And the reason is when you go ahead and you foam down your whole entire vehicle, some parts of the vehicle, even if you're working, like I'm working late in the late evening today, it's like, it's almost nine o'clock and I was still having issues with some parts of this drying and I was so afraid of letting it dry that I was just washing a panel, like foaming it down, washing it, rinsing it. And that took so much longer to do. So stick to the bucket method. And plus, if you use this in a foam cannon, six to eight ounces per um, per go is a lot of a lot of soap, right? You're gonna run through this pretty quickly. And I paid twenty two some odd dollars for this plus tax. So it's price wise, it's getting up there, pretty close to some of the premium soaps. So let me put this away. That being said, that's all I have for you guys on this soap. Armor Oil has obviously created a good product here, and by the looks of it they want to come back into the market they want to win back some of the market share and that's the beautiful thing about competition guys when companies are creating mediocre products people like me and you know pan the organizer and so many others are going to create reviews and these products are not going to hold up well companies see that and they they don't want to see their products perform horribly against others so what they have to do is they have to make a better product in order to compete with other products on the market now because we do live in the age of information and research so if they don't make a good product no one's going to buy their stuff and they're not going to sell so it, it looks like to me that armor all has been coming out with some pretty good products lately because they want to get back in they want to earn back some of the market share so with that being said this is a good product i'd use it on my own vehicle if you guys have any questions about this leave them down in the comments below uh, if you like this video hit that like button it helps the channel out subscribe if you already haven't and let me know in the comments what your favorite SIO2 or ceramic or wash and wax product is. And let me know in the comments below. With that, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys.